Yeah, murder and violence in popular movies on Netflix and, for that matter, on Prime. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Text, the movie show. And uh, George Kaysen and me, we get together every couple of weeks and review a movie. And this movie is different than the movies that we have reviewed uh, over the past several months. Um, the movies generally that we have reviewed are on a high level. They're educational movies. They're historical movies, even documentaries or docudramas. Um, this one is a very popular movie. This one's moving up the charts. Um, this one is uh, what people really like to watch, whether they're right in, 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 in that taste or not. This is called The Gray Man, starring Ryan Gosling. And George and I have watched this with some trepidation because we knew going in that it was full of murder and violence. Uh, and, you know, all the, 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 the regular plots, the, uh, the regular plots that you see, I mean, there's only a handful of plots among all of those movies in Netflix and Prime. And this falls in the center of the channel for all those plots. So, George, uh, you know, can you give us a, a handle on what was going on, or at least ostensibly what was going on in this movie? You have the main protagonist by Ryan Gosling, right? And he was in jail. We'll get into why he was in jail. And a CIA operative comes to him and gives him an opportunity to be released from jail. He's willing to, to, to work for the CIA undercover um, to do assassinations. And that's basically what his... His role is to assassinate our enemies around the world. So lo and behold, he he takes the opportunity, and they make him the gray man, which means he long, no longer has his identity. He's sort of gray, you know. It, um, everything's fake, you know. His identity is fake, and where he's living, they conceal and all that. It's for it. CIA operative, you know, they don't want to reveal his, his real name or anything. So as this goes on, it seems that there's this real, all these reptilian people working for the CIA, which I can get into the bigger picture, why I'm unhappy with the kind of movies today. And uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and, and for some reason, he's in a special unit that this uh, Fitzroy, that recruited him and set up. And uh, this new guy, McMillan, comes in. And uh, he's really reptilian. He wants to get rid of that whole unit. So one by one, has the unit killed off. And he has this Ryan Gosling, Gosling character go and uh, kill off one of the other certain routine squad, right? Six, six of them. So he kills him. And then he realizes that they're, you know, that they're out to kill him. That there's this female woman agent, very pretty agent, that's working. That's uh, Anna, Anna, Anna de uh, Amas. She is really beautiful. Yeah. And she's where And they, the, the scene after the jail scene, they think was in Singapore, and uh, he's in a club, and uh, she comes up and she looks weird outfit. I don't know. It's a very like a party outfit. She looks like a silly outfit. And, and, and she's communicating with him. And initially, you don't realize that she's another CIA agent. But, and, and then this movie gets into a lot of sort of subplots with um, this Roy's that he's recruited him, his niece, um, parents, his brother and sister in law passed away. And he sort of, you know, he's the young girl around 12. And, and, uh, when this uh, McMillan finds out that Fitzroy probably knows where the Ryan Gosling character is, right? He kidnaps the, the young girl and holds her hostage so that Fitzroy will reveal what he knows about the person he recruited. So they torture him and pull out his veil. And... You, you're just listing the elements of, of this Pulp Fiction kind of, um, you know, generic plot. Disgusting. Okay, CIA, murder, assassination, rogue CIA, rogue CIA agents, <laughs> uh, kidnapping, um, violence, torture, 
some of the best violence, if you ever want to say that about violence, violence is never best, but some of the best violence uh, in recent movie them, um, the way the way things blow up, I don't know how they do that. It must be special effects. I mean, and most extraordinary car chases and violent collisions and explosions. I mean, if you like violence, you'll really like this movie. And I think the American um, the American public likes violence. In fact, it's the global public that likes violence. And in the end, um, you know, uh, Brian Gosling gets into, um, you know, the, the final fight, right? Where, <laughs> where he's about to be killed, but he's saved instead. Um, and he, he prevails and the, uh, the villain is killed instead. Um, I mean, it's, it's Pulp Fiction. You could take the elements of the plot of this movie and move them around, and they, they exist in all of these movies. It's only how well you do it, how violent the violence is, and, and, uh, and, and the dialogue, I must say. The dialogue is really, really good. That's what attracted me. I, I always listen to the dialogue, and when they're making these, these quick, you know, punchy jokes and you know, ironic remarks, I say, wow, this is good. And, and it was good, uh, right on through. Um, but the problem which we should talk about is, um, you know, what, what have we got here anyway? Is this the world that we live in where people spend, you know, enormous amounts of time watching this pulp fiction kind of stuff, um, pulp violence um, with the same plot elements, one movie after the other? And the only question is, how big can you make the explosion? Um, and, I, you know, that's, that's the public taste. But it's not as simple as that, George, because you know, fact and fiction often get confused in the mind of the viewer. And it's almost as if we're celebrating assassins. We're celebrating rogue CIA. We're celebrating an intelligence agency that we should trust. We're losing trust somehow. Because, you know, the old Italian phrase, which I always hearken back to, is repetitio mater studiorum. Repetition is the mother of study. So if I give you hundreds of movies, all extolling the virtues of assassins and bad guys, um, and extolling the virtues of a rogue intelligence community that, that kills its own for no reason, um, that only has you know, dark agendas, anti-democratic agendas, after a while, you begin to believe that. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying that people must, they hear it so often, they must start believe it. And so we are educating them uh, in these fundamental points about violence is good and, and uh, our intelligence community is bad. This, is, this was the most expensive special effects movie that was ever um, done. So that's, that's why all those all that violence looks so good is because they spent a lot of money on special effects, police cars getting blown up and all this stuff, right? But getting back to the bigger picture that Jay is talking about, look around what's going on in this country right now. Look over the last few years. How many shootings, these young kids getting up, shooting people, right? And, 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 and also adults, you know, Las Vegas, I mean, I sent Jay an email, you know, for me. I, mean, I have Jewish relatives that are involved, getting very close to what the hell's going on with these killings, right? Uh, Pittsburgh, you know, the temple there, and then Highland Park, my nephew's relatives getting killed. And then you got that thing in uh, was it Texas, that kid that in the schools, Sandy Hook. We are in, in, in cocaine, well, inculcating our citizenry to believe that whatever goes on in these movies, that it's not real. So then when you have people in our society who are who have issues, mental issues, right? They go out and they they want to have their their hour of fame. So they go and they kill people. But we we've anesthetized our public toward What's really going on? You know, I mean, I, you and I were raised, Jay, in a different era. I mean, yes, there was violence. There were wars and stuff like that. But a lot of the movies in the 40s and 50s were very pleasant, kind of, you know. You had some that 
talked about real issues like custom But um, and that was still uplifting, you know. I mean, it, but these movies for me horrible. It's horrible because of what we're anesthetizing those in our society, and we've discussed this before, who have who are borderline personalities. I mean, we all have issues. I mean, I mean, my life I've been shit it on a lot, but I'm not going to go out and shoot people, you know? So, so uh, I mean, I mean, we need to look at what we're doing as good as this movie is, right? And it's, a, it's an excellent movie in terms of all the different things you check off, you know? But these kind of movies bringing on real problems. Well, it's a real conundrum though, George, and that's this. It's the First Amendment. You know, um, if they want to make a movie like that, who's going to stop them? There's no, there's no agency that I can think of, not public or private, that'll say, um, you know, we know you're making a lot of money. You spent a lot of money on these explosions. You're making a lot of money by people who want to see, you know, a bigger explosion than ever before. Um, and uh, you got to stop now. It's it's too it's too disruptive to our society it's uh, too suggestive um to those uh, you know 18 and 19 year old kids who have no other input and uh, who who buy into the violence as a positive thing and and uh, uh who who exactly is going to enforce that rule so what you have is uh, at least these there's there's a number of uh, uh cable channel movies and there's, there's the whole movie you know distribution industry that makes more money with violent movies. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. But at the same time, it's erosive um, to our, you know, our national social fabric. Um, so how do we stop this, George? I mean, let's assume that all right-thinking people agree with exactly what you said. Um, I make you president, okay, to, for a day, you're president. What are you gonna do about it? I would talk to Congress. Talk to Nancy, who soon is going to be Adam Schiff, who I love. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, she's, she's a problem. And then Chuck Schumer, and get the Congress and the president to meet and agree that there's a real problem. And then bring all the, the industry, you know, film industry people, and say, you know, you know, you're really doing a, a bad thing for America by having these kind of things. And look what's happening. Look around the country, all these people are getting killed, little kids. Great school kids getting killed, people, you know, minding their own business in a religious ceremony getting killed. So we've got to do something, you know. Let's start focusing more. What do you do? What do you do, though? I mean, some some movies are at, at, the, at the far end of the spectrum. This may be one of them. And other movies, just a little violence. So, you know, hop along Cassidy kind of violence. It's not it's not nearly as offensive or destructive. Um, but But what are you going to do? How are you going to make that decision? You know, in the past, they used to rate movies, right? You know, and the rating still exists. Um, and, and, and they changed, but they still exist. And and I wonder if uh, there ought to be a rating around violence, too. Where you Don't let your eight-year-old kid watch this stuff. Eight-year-old kids are watching this stuff all around the country, the world. And those eight-year-old kids, by the time they're 18, they have seen hundreds of these movies, and they have seen tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of gratuitous killings. This has got to have an effect on them. And so maybe they should be raided and, and parents should be held responsible or something. I don't know what it is, but you know, to me, uh, the First Amendment has got to give way um, you know, to peace and harmony in our time. And money, you know, they're making a lot of money, but you know, I, I, as a vegan, I, I, I studied his Scott, studied Himalaya, you know, Eastern religions and practicing it. Uh, you know, we, we really, our society, we need to get into more of a peaceful kind of existence. And, and I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to get into some of my own personal things about, uh, you know, veganism and how meat, the industry has changed and you used to go out and kill your chicken and, and, and eat it. Now it's in factory farms. They got to built with hormones and, and antibiotics, so it's not real food anymore. But but I mean, you know, what we're doing to our society with these violent movies is just horrible. And you know, 
this also, this movie was a picture of what goes on. I hope this is not true of what the CIA is all about, but I'm afraid it might. Well, if, if they repeat it in every movie, after a while, you know, that eight-year-old kid will grow up thinking the CIA is a bunch of rogues and murderers, and they kill their own for gratuitous reasons. So somebody really has to say something, but you know, nobody is. I mean, you never see a review like this, okay, where they take a movie like The Gray Man and start pulling the wings out of it. Never. So these kids, um, you know, a lot of kids, a whole generation of kids, um, are, are beginning to believe that the CIA, especially with Trump's attacks on the intelligence community, right, the deep state, all that, um, they're beginning to believe that, that the government is no good and you can't trust the government. The government is a bunch of murderers at the, at the bottom of it. So what do we do? We have to do something. You know, it, it, selling assault weapons certainly accelerates the amount of gratuitous violence in the country uh, and, and the ability of people who have mental issues uh, to act out. But you know what? Just as important, is, is being trained that assault weapons are good for you, like vitamin C, um, that it's okay to get involved in a murderous experience, that violence and bombing and explosions and assassinations are all okay. Um, which one has more effect on the lives of our generation coming up? It's hard to say that one of them is worse than the other. I think they both contribute to what we see today. These kids who go around with these assault weapons, they think they're the hero in the movie or the anti-hero, as the case may be. Sure. There's, there's no moral message there. You know, even the bad guys are the good guys and the good guys are often the bad guys. Um, and, and, and I guess that's a, a credit to Hollywood that they can make black into white and white into black and you don't know who's up. Um, but... Um, I think we have to, you know, the other thing I was going to mention, George, I'd like your impression on this. It seems to me that we're in a competition. The reason the gray man is so popular, um, the reason the gray man is you know, so attractive as a movie is that its explosions are more expensive. Its assassinations are more, more brutal. There's more blood and gore and God knows what happens in these, this movie and others. It's like a competition, you know? Next time, the guy who makes the, the sequel, if you will, a conceptual sequel to The Gray Man is going to have more explosions, more violence, more assassinations, more blood and gore. <clears throat> and that's the way you bring the audience in, by bettering the guy last time around, by competing, you know, with the violence before. And so each movie, each successful movie is worse than the last. And so it's going to get worse, George. Unless we do something about it. And, you know, I would really like to see our government agencies, Congress, and the President, that they, you know. Well, it's too bad because everybody's blaming, you know, the, the weapons. And of course, there's a lot of blame there. But they're not blaming the milieu in which our kids are being raised. You know, there was an article in the Washington Post uh, a couple of days ago, and we covered it this morning with Carl Ackerman about how there's a teacher shortage in the country. Well, it's not only a shortage, is it? There's a, a decline of the schools in our country. Some states more than others, but uh, generally speaking, a decline. <clears throat> and if you want to countervail, on the violence in the movies, the teachers have to be there and they have to teach, you know, the ethical considerations of living in a democracy. <clears throat> they have to teach civics. They have to teach morality. They have to teach what amorality is and so forth. Um, and if the schools are in decline, the kids aren't getting that. So on the one hand, the guns. On the other hand, the movies. And nothing countervails against the lessons that these kids are getting. I say kids, these kids have been getting these lessons for a long time, 10, 20 years now, we have seen this kind of pulp violence um, and it's gonna get worse. So we have mm, one or two generations who grown up swimming in it. 
Yep. You know, Jay, I don't know. I haven't, my first master's was in secondary ed and history, and I, I gave up teaching after two years because I was, the administration wasn't letting me do the skits. I did the Russian Revolution skit. They were unhappy with that. I wanted to get the kids right into that whole thing with the rep Dutton and all that. But so I, you're, what you're saying is that teachers, that article is true. The teachers don't want to teach. They, they get into other fields. Like I went to planning, you know. Um, so bottom line is um, we are living in a sick society. There's a lot of issues nationally, domestically, and internationally that we've got to really work on. And, you know, getting back to the whole thing we first discussed, you know, Iraq, Iran, CIA, we, we brought down the Shah, we you know, got rid of Saddam, and then what was, there was a vacuum, and look what filled the vacuum. So we, we, there's some real issues. And, you know, I really think we have, we have to have a chain. You know, I'm a, I don't know if you want to say it, but I'm an Elizabeth Warren and Bernie person. You know, we've got we've to make some changes. We've got to be more sensitive to both domestically and internationally. To what we're doing, you know, what is the result of, of, of doing things the standard way? You know, same old, same old, right? So I, I couldn't agree with that. You know, any assault weapon, if you really want an assault weapon, you can get it on the black market, you know? And even if we restrict assault weapons, the thing to do is to try to, as well, is to change the mentality of our young people and of our adults, you know, to think that what goes on in these movies that they can go out and have their day of, day of fame, you know. And a lot of these killers, they're sort of suicidal, so they're trying to get themselves killed. And so they figure they'll go out in a, in a blaze of glory. But we've got some real issues in this country. And it, as you said, they're not being addressed at all. And I got major problems with Hollywood, you know, uh, as yeah. well. I mean, well, the other, the other lesson these movies teach you is that Modern medical science can fix you up. <clears throat> so you get shot, for example, or terrible things happen to you, um, and the doctors can patch you up and you're out and back in a day or two. Uh, that's not exactly what happens. That didn't happen in U Uvalde. It didn't happen in uh, any of these massacres. They died, and there was nothing that anybody could do for them. And that's the way it's going to increase. You know, the same kind of competition I spoke of in the movies repeats itself um, in, the, in the massacres. It's like these guys want to kill more people. They want to have weapons that will kill more people. And there's this whole Bonnie and Clyde mentality. Uh, yeah, we condemn them. Yeah, we shake our fists at them and we shoot them, maybe kill them, maybe put them in jail for the rest of their lives. But like Bonnie and Clyde, there's a certain you know, a certain anti-hero thing with them. Uh, and, they, and they get off on that. They want to be anti-heroes. They want the world to take note. Uh, there was a time when um, the press was very careful never to mention the name of an assailant, you know, uh, uh, somebody who shot, shot up a bunch of people. Um, I think they're sloppy about that now, and we, we usually hear the name. But, but a lot of these guys are in it to be famous. They're in it to have their name on the media. And there's got to be something we can do in that regard, too. Uh, I know everybody wants to know what happened in Uvalde. Everybody wants to know that. Um, and, the, and the media is there covering it in great detail for days and weeks and months to come. Um, and that somehow is counterproductive. Um, because if you keep you know, making it a news story, you're also making it a cause celeb for the ones with mental distress. I mean, mental issues. So I don't know. I, it's, it's like the media has to be more restrained, maybe. It has been in the past, but it's not restrained now. Jay, how realistic, if you, after watching this movie, the great Ryan Gosling and that other Ana de Armas, I mean, they got out of so many situations. I mean, they're always the ones who win. You know, they're right in front of death, and then and then they he gets hurt, and then they put, as you said, they put him back together. 
that is totally unrealistic that in so many different situations that they're going to that they're going to come out clean and the enemy is going to is going to die that's just total bs right so these 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 young kids or whoever they got this they get the wrong impression i mean we got to do this this has got to be stopped we we've got to put we got to tell hollywood you know make movies that are not like this because as you said they're going to get worse and more expensive because Bottom line is they're making money. I mean, no, I mean, they should be making movies that are educational and that send a helpful message of some kind. Movies that have an art to them, not just the violence. It's, it's Kabbalistic. My, that's that's what they taught me in school. Kabbalistic, where they they cut the corners and get right to the bottom line, uh, which is um, not the kind of movie, not the kind of art we want to have. A great nation deserves great art. This is not great art. Sorry, not at all. So um, this is it creates a problem for us to review the movie and and to apply, you know, ratings to it, George. Uh, if you reviewed it on the basis of you know that the pyrotechnics should have to give it a, you know, a high mark. If you reviewed it on the basis of the of the fast and witty dialogue, same thing, you know, and the and the um, the lighting and the and the pretty. The pretty uh, heroine, uh, Anna the yeah, Armas, um, and, and and Brian Ryan Gosling, he was good. Uh, if you review it on on that basis, in terms of what the people want, what what will titillate them, um, you know, using the 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 uh, the elements of of uh, pulp pulp violence, you would have to give it a good a good rating. But if you if you look at it, and I think we should. If you look at it, not as a box office hit, um, not as uh, appealing to people who like violence uh, or who are unformed and need and need, you know, guidance and get the wrong guidance. If you, if you look at it from the the, the national sensibility point, the, the, the social sensibility point, um, you don't rate it the same way. So we have two ratings here. And I suggest that to you, two ratings. So first, George, let me ask you, on a scale of one to 10, uh, I'll make that zero to 10, what would you give it on a, on a technical basis as a movie that is um, you know, in line with other movies of our time? 10, I mean, it's the, the special effects are good, uh, story, the acting is good, uh, the scenery is, you know, it's good the, the feelings of, you know, of him toward that young girl, you know, trying to protect her, um, you know, uh, it's good. So it's a 10 on, on that scale, on that rating. But then on the other rating, I have, you know, you make your rating on this one and then I'm going to give the other rating. Oh, go for it. You want to wait? You want to wait for me? Now, let me wait for you to make yours on this one, on, on the uh, quality. Okay. You have to, I have to say that I'm, my view of each one of these things is colored by the other. Um, I would not give it a 10. I, just, I can't bring myself to give it a 10. I would give it maybe a seven, um, which is not my highest rating. And um, now that I've said that, what, what would you give it on the rating of socially useful? A zero. Same here, George. Zero. There's no social. There's no redeeming quality here. And and the the rating that we are giving for the zero applies to not only the Gray Man, but all of these movies, these pulp violence movies that are, you know, that are we're surrounded by, we're drowning in them, and and Hollywood should stop making them if they're going to spend two hundred million dollars on a movie like this, they could do a terrific job on a documentary or a docudrama that teaches you something and gives you a better view of the world. That's how they should spend that money. And if they stop making movies like this one and offer value movies to the public, the public will watch. They will watch. You put you know, high production values, um, good looking actors, good dialogue, just a better story. You know, Jay, there's only about 10% of this gray man that's actually dialogue between, you know, good dialogue between uh, Ryan Gosling and that 
woman, the, the young girl that played Fitzroy, you know, the, the niece of, of Fitzroy. So 90% of this is pure violence. And getting back, you know, I, I've discussed my own family's situation, how my grandfather and his brothers and his, his, his father, uh, they were cut open with a scimitar, you know, they were all taken out into some valley and cut to pieces, their guts were cut out. That was real stuff, you know, and 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 um, and then the Holocaust, right? And then Rwanda and all this stuff. And and I think these kind of movies sensitize the public to what's really going on in you know, Ukraine. I mean, Putin is killing civilians by the hundreds, by the hundreds of thousands in, in Ukraine. And we get anesthetized by seeing this stuff. And it's all fantasy. There's, there, there's something drastically centrally wrong with what Hollywood is producing and and what and then the repercussions just look around how many shootings Uvalde and all the other ones I mentioned right so we've got a problem and I think the Congress is it doesn't want to you know reign in Hollywood because it's we have a free society you know but but I mean it gets to a point where you know they're trying to get rid of uh, assault weapons you know and guns but if you really want a gun, I mean, if you don't kill someone with a gun, you can kill them with a knife, you know? Who knows? I just did something. Oh, yeah. Did somebody cut off somebody's hand, you know? Yeah. Well, the gorier, the the more the viewers like it. They want, want, want to see that. And it's, it's yes. tragic. And, and, you know, something you said, I just want to make one last point. Uh, so if you see this kind of movie, and Hollywood is not interested in the reality, for example, of what's happening in Ukraine, um, then, you know, it diminishes the importance of Ukraine, of that invasion, of that violence. And so the whole thing is scrambled, and the public is confused, not only here, but anywhere, because these movies have global circulation. And I think it's very bad for the, the liberal world order and a free society in, in every country. So this is just as much information technology as anything else. Okay, George, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to our next discussion. Um, I'll try to suggest a movie that is um, um, more constructive next time. I think we made our points on this one. It was a good experience to look at the movie, I suppose, and, and it was a good experience to review the movie. Thank you so much, George. And I'm still recovering, so thank you for bearing with me today. It's been about two weeks with this, whatever I picked up earlier or whatever. Okay, thank you. Thank you, George. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.